Good morning, everyone. Thank you so much. It's a pleasure and an honor uh, to be here this morning and talk to you about the results from the phase three Ember three trial. These are my disclosures. So Ember three is a phase three global open label trial enrolling men and women, regardless of menopausal status, with ER positive HER2 negative advanced breast cancer who have had recurrence on or within 12 months of completion of their adjuvant therapy with an aromatase inhibitor with or without a CDK4-6 inhibitor, or progression on first-line therapy in the metastatic setting, again with an aromatase inhibitor with or without a CDK4-6 inhibitor, and no other therapy for advanced disease. A total of 874 patients were randomized using three stratification factors of prior CDK4-6 inhibitor therapy, visceral metastases, and region to one of the three study arms. Arm A enrolled patients and treated them with imlunestran monotherapy administered at 400 milligrams orally daily. Arm B is standard of care endocrine therapy and arm C evaluated the combination of imlunestrand plus abamaciclib. Of note, this third arm was added as a study amendment early in accrual. The trial has three primary endpoints, which included investigator-assessed PFS for imlunestrand versus standard endocrine therapy in patients with ESR1 mutations and all patients, and imlunestrand plus abemaciclib versus imlunestrand alone in concurrently randomized patients. Key secondary endpoints and exploratory endpoints are as listed on this slide. Baseline characteristics were generally well balanced, including in patients with ESR1 mutations. Overall, 37% had an ESR1 mutation. 40% had a PI3K pathway mutation, which could have included mutation in the PI3K, AKT, or P10. Now these mutations were detected after randomization prior to study treatment using a centralized ctDNA assay. Approximately 30% had recurred on or within 12 months of their adjuvant therapy. Approximately 60% had progression on first-line metastatic therapy. Overall, 60% had received a prior CDK4-6 inhibitor, majority being palbociclib and ribociclib. Moving to results, this is the first primary endpoint in patients with ESR1 mutations. Imlunestrand alone significantly improved investigator-assessed PFS compared to standard of care endocrine therapy. Median PFS was 5.5 versus 3.8 with a hazard ratio of 0.62, representing a 38% reduction in the risk of progression or death. At the landmark 12-month point analysis, 25% were progression-free in the imlunestrand arm compared to 7% in the standard endocrine therapy arm. This is the second primary endpoint, evaluating investigator-assessed PFS in all patients. The PFS difference for imlunestrand versus standard of care endocrine therapy in all patients did not reach statistical significance. Hazard ratio here is 0.87. Notably, the majority subgroup of patients without ESR1 mutations showed no difference in PFS. The hazard ratio is one. Now for the third primary endpoint, looking at investigator-assessed PFS in all patients, imlunestrand plus abemaciclib significantly improved investigator-assessed PFS in all patients compared to imlunestrand alone Median PFS was 9.4 versus 5.5 months with a hazard ratio of 0.57, representing a 43% reduction in the risk of progression or death. Shown here are the Kaplan-Meier curves 
for investigator P assessed PFS by ESR1 mutation status. As you can see, a consistent benefit of imlunostrand plus abemaciclib was seen regardless of ESR1 mutation status. Median PFS was 11.1 versus 5.5 in patients with ESR1 mutations, as shown on your left. Median PFS was 9.1 versus 5.5 in patients without ESR1 mutations, as shown on your right. Now, in clinic, majority of our patients are pre-treated with a CDK4-6 inhibitor, and treatment selection is predominantly dependent on a biomarker status. So it was really important to evaluate the activity of imlunostrand plus abamaciclib in this key clinical subgroups. And as shown here, a consistent benefit for imlunostrand plus abamaciclib was seen across these key clinical subgroups. As a reminder, approximately 65% were pre-treated with a CDK4-6 inhibitor prior to being randomized to imlunostrand plus abamaciclib. And you can see the median PFS is 9.1 versus 3.7 in these patients with prior CDK4-6 inhibitor therapy with a hazard ratio of 0.51. Similarly, a consistent benefit was seen in patients with PI3K pathway mutations with median PFS of 7.6 versus 3.8 as shown on your right. At the time of this interim overall survival analysis, there was 31% maturity in patients with ESR1 uh, mutations and 23% maturity for all patients. And you can see a favorable trend for overall survival with imlunostrand. In patients without ESR1 mutations, this maturity was low at 18%. And it was the lowest in patients with combination therapy comparison at 15%. Moving on to safety. Overall, imlunostrand alone demonstrated a generally favorable safety profile. The most common adverse events were fatigue, diarrhea, and nausea, and these were no more than 10% increase compared to standard of care endocrine therapy. Grade three or higher events were 17% in imlunostrand alone versus 21% in the standard of care endocrine therapy arm. Dose reductions and discontinuation rates were low at 2 and 4% respectively, and there were no oral surge-specific signals of cardiac or ocular toxicity. Now, while injection site reactions were reported as an adverse event in patients receiving fulvestrant as the standard therapy, that was 9%, patients reported injection site pain, swelling, or redness was 72%, based on a PRO-CTCAE survey. For the doublet as expected, the incidence of adverse events was higher, with diarrhea being the most common toxicity. However, again, this was predominantly grade one. The safety profile was consistent with the known abemaciclib profile and compared favorably with what has already been reported with fulvestrin plus abemaciclib with no additive safety signal for imlunostrand plus abemaciclib. And in fact, the discontinuation rate for imlunostrand plus abemaciclib was low at 6%. So in conclusion, imlunostrand monotherapy significantly improved PFS compared to standard of care endocrine therapy in patients with ESR1 mutations, but did not reach statistical significance in the overall population. A consistent benefit was seen across key subgroups, and overall survival analyses were immature and ongoing. Imlunostrand demonstrated a favorable safety profile with no oral surge-specific safety signals of cardiac or ocular toxicity. The combination of imlunostrand plus abamaciclib significantly improved PFS compared to imlunostrand alone in all patients, regardless of ESR1 mutation status, achieving a 9.4-month PFS with consistent benefits seen across key subgroups. This combination demonstrated a predictable safety, which was comparable to prior studies of fulvestrin plus abemaciclib with a low discontinuation rate of 6% relative to available combination regimens. And as such, imlunostrand as monotherapy or combined with abemaciclib 
provides an all oral targeted therapy option after progression on endocrine therapy for patients with ER positive HER2 negative advanced breast cancer.